Um, but of course, every image of a rhinoceros has it somewhere in the back of its head, of the image's head, the great Dura rhinoceros of 1515. So that's an easy, immediate connection. The other less immediate ones, I'm interested in his drawings about optics, about what it is to be looking in his Unterwesen der Meso, and the stereoscopic prints I made rely, relate to that. And then going further back, there is his triumphal art with its many, many pages that make up one image which I've found myself doing again in the last few years of taking what's usually a small technique, etching or engraving a woodcut, and expanding it by multiplying the pages and doing images that are larger than any press can produce. There's a sense of all of these traditional techniques, whether it's etching or engraving or woodblock cut, uh, printing or liner cutting, that they are manual. They involve your actual hand doing it. They involve the muscle power. There's a translation from an idea into your arm, into your fingers, into the material as opposed to a digital medium which is without a touch. It's moving a mouse while you're looking at the screen. But essentially it is a, a non-physical way of making an, an image. There's no cost to the body of doing it. Um, and for me there's a way of thinking through the body and the physical thinking as opposed to simply a mental, rational understanding which is vital to what it is to be an artist. It has to do, I suppose, with uh, different ways of unlocking one's unconscious, to bring it from the 15th century to the late 19th century and early 20th century, and the understanding that we all have that there are more intelligences in us than those we are aware of. I mean, no one post-Freud can think that what we think consciously is all that we have to say. We know that's the surface and that below there are all sorts of other storms, and ways of releasing it, if you're in psychoanalysis, it has to do through endlessly talking. If you're an artist, it has to do with trusting in the physical activity of making. And that's because the deep truth of uh, digital media is that it is invisible. One takes it on trust. In the same way that people handed their money over to trust fund managers and hoped that it would magically become more and were kind of shocked when that collapsed. There's a sense of a, a partial trust in the digital, that it will save us and will save everything and we'll never lose anything. 
when in fact we know that the most fragile of all materials is the digital material and the most reliable and long-lasting is paper and film and the analog. And in the Library of Congress, when libraries say, well, we've digitized all our newspapers, we've thrown them out, how do we store our digital material? Their answer is three words, print it out. Thank you.